Ron's put all his efforts into the party. He needs a big result. And Cameron, he needs some big spenders. At $950, not signing anything else. At $950, I have at $1,000 in the centre. At $1,000, around $1,000. Surely there's another 50 going, going. Sold, Tony, congratulations, $1,000. Right. The big ticket item is the Olympic tracksuit signed by all 16 of our gold medalists. It's got a reserve of $2,900. 5000 another 500 five and a half, six, six and a half, six and a half I have, seven, I've got seven and a half thousand dollars. Can I see eight? At seven and a half thousand now. At seven eight, I've got. At eight thousand, eight and a half is against you, Karim. At eight and a half thousand dollars, are you all done? At eight and a half thousand dollars, going, going. And so, dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. This is the best money I've spent. So everyone's confident going into the final day of the money game, but tomorrow is the three contenders' last chance to make a quick buck. For every one that he sells, I'm prepared to give him $2. Look, honestly, it just doesn't work for me. Just... There'll be desperate deals. Don't you ever take a risk on things? That... Some dirty tricks? No, I just wonder whether it's one of my competitors who's rung and changed my flight. And the question of whether one bloke will make it at all. When are we going to make this plane to Sydney? Well, it's closed. It's all over at 5 p.m. tomorrow, and I have a feeling that this will be a close one. It's the final day of the money game, and Pamela has a very early start. I'm on my way to the airport to catch the 5.30 flight. Um, when I get to Sydney, I'm going to have to get some transport. Hopefully I can find someone who can drive me around all day and save me some time. But I need to make calls and uh, get onto people at the network and see if maybe someone will see me so I can show them this TV show. And if I sell that, then I'm hoping I'll make maybe as much as $10,000. Then um, I've got to check my internet site, see if I made any sales overnight. Whatever the highest bidder is on that, I guess I take it. And I think I might have a little bit of money left, so I'm going to try and think of something else to do through, throughout the day. Cameron's only remaining deal is the $95 a head lunch with Jesse Martin. It's in three weeks' time, but the tables must be sold by 5 p.m. today. This is the type of ballroom I'm looking at for the business luncheon and uh, we'll be holding hopefully up to 45 tables. Looks very appropriate, but uh, I've got to get on the move. I've got to get back to Sid's and see the team hard at work. Right, oh, it's 10 a.m. in Sydney, start of day three. Sydney turned on the weather for us, absolutely not. Looks like we've got a battle between the states on our hands. You've got uh, Pamela and Ron from Queensland, Cameron doing his best in Melbourne. Now he's still selling his lunch. Ron's doing some dirty deals up there in Queensland and Pamela's now in Sydney and she is trying to sell her TV show. It's an intriguing battle, this one, the money game. And we're now into the final straight. For Pamela, that means calling every television network and trying to sell that cosmetic surgery program. Um, but I only have today. I, I absolutely can't send anything over or do it any other way. Oh, oh he's going out to lunch. Ron's day hasn't started at all well either. The mobile phone salesman has been nailed for using a handheld phone while driving his rental. He's going to book me. I can't believe he's going to book me. Nice and smack. Just get that new address off him, please. Well, you're not going to book me. He's $75. Mate, I'm, I'm doing a show with Channel address? 7. Which address? Sorry? Which address? Your current address? Uh, I forgot. What is it? Level 2. <laughs> Level 2. <laughs> Level two. Oh, it's only 75 bucks. There's plenty of money on, mate. Uh, I can get away with 75 bucks. What do you reckon? No luck at selling the program to the network, so Pamela's going to have to buy the airtime herself. Well, that's the agency, and they've managed to buy me all of New South Wales and Victoria for $4,000 for 28.5 minutes. Now, on top of that, I've got to put GST, so that's $4,400. If we don't start supporting Australian products...
and Ron may have met his screaming match on the Gold Coast. We're promoting my new product. I'm telling the people if they don't start buying Australian, looking after your, your young Australians like myself, there'll be no jobs for the youth. So I've got my brand new product here, the window cleaner. No job for the youth. I need a job. Can I sell you what I'll do? For every one you give away, as long as you can get the person I'm to say, away. ask them to use Wait, it. This is the easiest job I've ever got in my life. Tell them. i got a job with Big Cap and we're going to give away his cleaning product. For every one that he sells, I'm prepared to give him two dollars because he's synonymous with the Gold Coast. We're up here for Indy and I know that he can do the job. Not as good as Big Kim, but if he gets excited, Crazy Ron will do the job. I love Big Kim. Who say like, we love Big Kim, we love and I'm making two bucks a deal here. Here we go. With just five hours to go, some people still seem to be spending more than they're actually making. But there is still time for someone to pull something out of a hat. Nice day. Now, how are you getting on? We're pretty close. Well, actually, I thought I'd come and sit here and I'd ring all the big guys at the networks and then I could whiz out and see anyone that would see me. But it's Friday afternoon and they're all at meetings. Lunchtime. I guess they've gone to lunch. I phoned them all. No, Joy, on the cosmetic surgery report. Not so That's far. It. Not so far. Okay. Well, you look, you're running close to time now. I know, but I've got a very good idea. Because I'm in Double Bay, um, Rene Rifkin's got his office here. Now, he's very famous for doing money deals and yes. he's very wealthy. Yes. So I thought, I've rung him, you know, but he hasn't rung me back. But I've been busy. I guess that's why he didn't ring me back. Okay. So I'm going to whiz around to his office and see if maybe he might give me an idea. How are you going anyway? What do you got? I really thought that I was going to do something like 20 or 30. I'm a bit disappointed. Well, the day's not over yet. I'll leave you to it. Earn the money, Ronnie! $400 coming up! And 200 bottles of window cleaner later... Can this man sell? Thought I was good, but he's crazy, and I'm excited. Big Kev, you're a legend. Love your work. But hang on, that's $400. What happened to GST? You're going to pay me GST? Cameron's confident. He's heading back to Sydney, but he's got a problem at the airport. I've booked for the 1 o'clock flight. I've been told that like, I'm now on a 4 o'clock flight, and obviously the rules of the game are I've got to be in Sydney by 5 o'clock. So I'm looking for ANSET to do whatever they can to get me on this flight. It's 20 past 12. We've got to get to Kulangata Airport. We're running late. We're always late. The traffic is shocking. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I've got all this money. I've got to get it to Sydney by 5 o'clock. So I'm doing my best to get to the airport, but I don't know if we're going to make it. So we're speeding. Careful, Ron. Careful. You could be asking for trouble. Here we go. The cop has just booked me. Here we go. Another... Look, I'm serious. I'm going to get to the airport. I'm playing the Channel 7 money game. Yeah, well, and we've got a Channel 7 camera crew. That's why I'm rushing. I've got to get to the airport. I'm with... We're not going to have you doing 112. It's cool, man. I, know, I understand. It's cool. All right. I'm understand. more than happy to write you a ticket, mate. regardless of who you are understand. or why mate, you're running. Or... It's not the issue. If you want to write me a ticket, I understand. It's fine. Mate, it's just 112, mate. It's in the roads. are busy. And you're zipping past. Yeah. We're at the intersection. So you just overtook us on the inside left lane yeah. and you still continue to speed. Yeah. You're a smart boy, so use a bit of that for us. Fair enough, mate. No, if you want to give me a ticket, I understand, mate. Mate, I don't want to write your ticket. All we're right. busy too, mate. Right. We're rushing cool. to Miami, but we're rushing at 70, unfortunately. All right. No worries. You get the picture? I understand. All right, mate. All right. See you later. Thanks, Ian. Good on you. See you. No, I just wonder whether it's one of my competitors who's rung and changed my flight. I wonder how they'd find out about it. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Okay. I'll just, I'll just, um, I'll just put him on and, and see what we can do later on. So uh, somehow my flight was changed to four o'clock. It'd be very interesting to find out by who and how. But uh, so I've managed to rechange things and got the last seat. Unfortunately, means unfortunately means I've got to go business class. But you can't help bad luck sometimes. Anyway, there's always a way. Here you go. Pull over anywhere, Ron. You can do it, Ron. Come on, Ron. There we go. Here we go. Yes, let's go. If Ron misses this flight, there won't be another until 4 p.m. That's too late for our 5 o'clock deadline. G'day, mate. How are we? Mate, are we going to make the plane to Sydney? Or well, it's closed? Leaving at 1.15. You got your ticket, mate? Leaving at 1.15. It's been adjourned. We made the flight. OK. Here's the question. Is Pamela grasping at straws as she goes looking for some expert guidance? 
Let me give you some really good reasons why you would benefit from, from sponsoring this show. But Rivkin Group Director Nigel Littlewood has better things to do. I'm sorry. It's just it's too far in left field for me to justify. Look, honestly, it just doesn't work for me. It's just too hard. Don't you ever take a risk on things that you just know it's going to be... You're not really making any more sense. You just keep talking. Could we not just... Let's get back to just maybe if we did something for $1,000. It's not a lot of money. Oh, this is going to Actually, be really my bad. time is worth so much that I'm going to give you $1,000 to get out of my office and let me get on with work. You're a wonderful man. And you've got to say how wonderful the Rivkin Report is for sponsoring your program. All through it. How's I'll that? I'll definitely say that. Thank you. Now, leave me alone. Let me get back to work. Ron's made his flight, but it's running 50 minutes late. So while he grabs a quick nap, we're wondering if he's going to make our 5 o'clock deadline. I'm at the airport. I'm waiting for Ron. As you can see, it's almost 10 past 3. His flight from the Gold Coast due at 5 past 3. It's now due at 5 minutes to 4. That is an hour before our deadline at the top of Centrepoint. So one hour in Sydney traffic, in the rain, at peak hour. I hope he's going to make it. He's a good chance at this, Ron. If he's in, he's in. If he's not, well... He's out, if you know what I mean. The race is on, but right now, oh, I wouldn't be backing Crazy Ron. It's 3.30 and we're going to get... Oh, it's 4.30, I haven't changed my watch. We've got to get the Centrepoint Tower. There's heaps of traffic going on, the rain everywhere. We've got to get the Centrepoint Tower. Quick, driver, how long are we going to be? It's nearly 5 p.m. and the money game must draw to a close. Confident and cocky, Cameron arrives at the Centrepoint Tower. Pamela, too, has met the deadline. No sign yet of Ron. It's five minutes to five and I think we may have a problem. Yes! I made it! Good. Right. Two out of three, but we're still missing Ron. Let's go! Why is it taking so long for? Come on, please! We're not stuck here. There's something going on here. Oh, you're kidding me. It's not going back downstairs. Five o'clock is the end of the money game. Cameron's here, Pamela's here, Ron, 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 run. Help me, Ronnie. Good, Andrew. Well done, mate. You've just made it. Congratulations. Thank you. Listen, thanks for playing, everyone. You had a good time? Oh, Harder than you thought it might have been? It was gruelling. To raise it was some cruel. cash? Okay, let's go through first what you spent of your 10000 We'll start with ladies first. I spent $10,068. It's a bit of a big hit. The TV show cost 4500 for the airtime and 2500 for the production costs. Also 700 a night for the hotel room, proving you've got to spend money to make money. Ron, how did you go? $5,575. Airfares, hotels, limos and luxuries cost Ron more than $3,500. He actually spent only two grand on the marketing and staging of his party. Now, Ron, I know it was worth uh, it was worth every penny to you, Cameron. I also know the punting cost you plenty. He spent three thousand two hundred dollars at the track, two and a half thousand on the dinner. The auction memorabilia all had reserves, so he only had to pay when and if the item sold. At forty-five bucks a head, the luncheon cost was a little over twenty-one and a half thousand, and those pens well, they were three hundred and fifty-five. A grand total of twenty-seven thousand. $27,200. $27,200. A lot of money to spend, isn't it, Cam? But it's not what you spend, it's what you make. That's the name of the game. That is, in fact, the money game, and so let's get to that now. We'll start ladies first. Pamela, how did you go? $13,068. So 3000 up on your yeah. 10. Looks pretty. Yeah. Pamela's TV program earned her $12,000. The Rifkin sponsorship, $1,000. And those lucky sticks, 68 bucks. You guys want a lucky stick? Unfortunately, Pamela, I think you've been shebanged by these two. I'm not surprised. All right, so what about a hand for Pamela? We'll let her go. Congratulations. So, it's goodbye to Pamela and down to just two contenders. Cam, now, here's the deal. You two are pretty close. Tell me. In fact, you're very close. Mm -hmm. um, how are you feeling about it? You're feeling pretty confident your party was good? Your... Oh, the party was sensational. Yeah? Very big party. And you're feeling pretty good about your, uh, your total? Absolutely. All right, we'll toss to see who sells us first. Heads for Ron. Heads it is. Right, oh, no, crazy man. $31,315. That is a brilliant effort. That is a brilliant effort. That total came from selling Big Kev's window cleaner for $400. Ron raised $22,500 in sponsorship of the party and $4,500 in ticket sales for the big event. $31,315. In three days. In two and a half days. Yep, in two and a half days. And the real estate man continues to smile. How'd you go, Cam? 
Uh, $65,466. Well done. Congratulations. Well done. Cameron, congratulations. Brilliant result. It's, it's quite staggering, isn't it? Two and a half thousand from the races, twenty-five and a half thousand from his dinner and auction, nearly two grand from the sale of the pens, and twenty-five and a half thousand dollars from selling four hundred and thirty seats at his Jesse Martin lunch. Well done, congratulations. Thank the winner you. of our money game. Thank you. That's not a bad effort in two and a half days. Good on you. Good on you. Is that what you thought you'd get? I was hoping for fifty plus. Right. It, would, it exceeded my expectations. Quietly confident. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for watching the money game. I'm going to stick with. Well, I'd, I'd go with either of them, but he's dressed better. See you, mate. <laughs>